what not to do to your house before you sell it. Now I get it, you wanna get the highest, the highest sale to get the most money in your pocket, but be careful, don't throw money out the window on some remodel project that isn't actually gonna get you more money in your pocket. Because and here's the key people, every house is different, right? You might have a better location than someone else. You might have a better floor plan than someone else. But I'm basing this information off of national statistics and what gets you the highest return on your money. So stick around at the end because I will give you the full list of most remodel jobs and what the return will be. I'll give you those stats, so stick around to the end. I will also give you five recommendations of what you should do that are low budget ideas before you sell the house to get the most money in your pocket. But let's start with what not to do, okay? Number one, don't do a huge kitchen or bathroom remodel. They can be costly. They can also be sort of personal. So if your kitchen is in decent shape, maybe it has older granite, even older tile, um, don't think, oh, you know, we should rip it everything out, we should do new flooring, new cabinets, new lighting. It can run upwards 50,000 or more. And you probably won't get that much money plus more back because of just the kitchen or just a bathroom being remodeled. For a full kitchen remodel, it's about a 42% return on your investment. That's not that great. A uh, full bath is higher at around 66%, but I still don't think that's the best use of your money um, from my experience in general. So don't do those two things. Number two, don't do a new roof. Okay, if you have leaks and water stains all over your house, it might be time that you really do have to do the roof, but try to avoid that at all costs. Even if it's at its end of life and the buyer will see, oh my gosh, one of the first things I'm gonna have to do is the new roof, you will only get about a 48% return on that investment and buyers don't really appreciate it. It's like, oh, that's awesome, there's a brand new roof, but then they walk in the house and other things need to be updated or it doesn't feel so fresh and clean it's as great as that $30,000 new roof is, it's not gonna help you with the sale. Number three, don't start updating other things that they can't see like the plumbing and electrical. Unless the electrical has knob and tube um, paneling, but don't do the electric and plumbing. You're not gonna get that money back. That can be you know, $50,000 that a buyer again will love. They'll be like, oh, that's great but they'll still use other things in the house that aren't updated as reasons not to be as aggressive their offer price. So you're not gonna get the return on investment for updated plumbing and electrical, sorry. Four, it's kind of along that line too, is the windows. So if the house is already a little bit dated, um, it just doesn't make sense to go in and update all the windows. That can be really costly. The buyers aren't gonna be like, oh, it has upgraded windows. Let's be really aggressive with our offer price. It's, it's gonna be nice, but it's not gonna put more money into your pocket. So after. number five, don't upgrade the water heater or the air conditioning unit unless they absolutely don't work. But you might know the AC is at the end of its lifetime, same thing with the water heater, but they're still working. Just don't touch them, don't bother. Those kind of things, again, a buyer will love. It's great, but they're not gonna be more aggressive with their offer if they Now let's talk about the five things that I almost always recommend all of my sellers do before putting the house on the market. Seriously though, 90% of them, I recommend these five things. Number one, paint, 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 paint. It is one of the least costly remodeling things you can do to get more money in your pocket. If you spend $10,000 on painting, you could get upwards of 50,000 more. I'm not kidding, in your pocket, it's great. Paint the interior, all one color kitchen, bathroom, living room, the whole house, one color, one neutral color, and be very careful with that neutral color. You don't want just stark white, that's not so inviting. You want a little bit of an off-white, depending on what's trending, maybe with a little gray tone to it, maybe with a little tan tone to it, the white cream color, neutral. Neutral throughout the house. Do your ceilings a bright white. White ceilings just makes the room sort of pop more. Do the baseboards. Do interior doors if you can. Even with old doors, if you haven't upgraded your doors, even a fresh coat of paint can make a big difference. Front door, coat of paint, huge difference. People have no idea going in and out of their house how dinged up their front door is. So fresh coat of paint, it will go a long way. Not that costly. Number two, do a yard cleanup. 
Not talking about a major, you know, re-landscaping or anything, but get all the bushes and trees trimmed back, especially if you have juniper bushes, trim them back. You have these big juniper bushes that sort of hide half the house. They've been there since the 70s. It just screams dated house. Get those really trimmed back. Put a little fresh bark you know, around some bushes if you can, that sort of pops the, the front yard. Again, not costly, this is not costly. Maybe put some fresh potted plants right by the front door, especially if you're moving locally, you can take those pots with you. You want that entrance to feel really welcoming and it does not have to be that expensive. Do the same with the backyard. You don't have to do nearly as much with the backyard, but just clean it up. Number so three, declutter and get a deep, cleaning of the house. Not just you kind of wiping things down, not your normal, you know, twice a month house cleaner. Get a deep cleaning on the house, but first you get all your clutter out. People, you're going to be moving anyway soon. So get this stuff, as much as stuff you can out of the house. If you can put, them in, put it in the garage, some people get a pod and put all their stuff, or all the extra stuff in the pod in the driveway and people are okay with seeing a pod in the driveway. But you do not want people to walk into your house as if it's a regular Wednesday afternoon and you have stuff all over. Take extra personal pictures down the walls. It's better to have less than any clutter and when you get a deep cleaning, it can help with some of the smells, your kind of natural family smells in that house. Um, not saying it's bad, everyone has them, but you don't want a buyer to walk in the house and smell that. So declutter and a deep clean. Five light fixtures. I'm telling you, they're not that expensive. You can have a brand new light fixture in your entrance hallway that is maybe only $50. Another $50 have it installed if you can't do it yourself. But that's one of the first things a buyer feels and sees as they walk in the house. It just feels fresh and new. If you have a 30, 40 year old light fix right there, it's just noticeable. Bathroom, same thing. They're not that expensive. A new light fixture there and kitchen, a new light fixture. You don't have to do them all, but just pick a few places that might make the biggest impact. And last one, number five, staging. I almost never list a house for sale without staging it. It makes a huge difference. So some people say, oh, well, isn't it better just to get everything out and just really have like a couch and a table and that'll work, right? No, get a stager. I have a few different stagers I utilize depending if we need all furniture or just mix and match with your things. Some stagers are great at that. So we'll do a walkthrough with you and we'll pick, hey, the stager says that needs to go, that needs to go. I will bring in this, they'll bring in some you know, little knickknacks or flowers or new towels in the bathroom. It makes a huge difference. The stats are there to prove this. It's almost a deal breaker for me. That's how important I feel staging really is. So I mentioned earlier, a lot of this information is based on stats. So um, it's recent stats from 2024 based on what the cost is and what your return will be. It has like 25 different projects and what your return will be. And if you want that full list, Go down to the description below and I have a link for you and you can see for yourself. I hope that was helpful. Until next time, have a good one.